What is it like to live without the experience of inside and outside? Now that doesn't mean that there's no inside and there's no outside. It simply means that the dichotomy between inside and outside, the experience of there being an inside of me and an outside of me doesn't exist. So it's not like what you take to be the inside disappears and what you take to be the outside disappears. Rather, all boundaries that define inside and outside are seen to be a complete and total illusion. They simply don't exist. There's no inside as opposed to an outside, and there's no outside as opposed to an inside. The seeming relationship has no place. It has no location. It has no effect on your experience. It has no effect on your belief or your behavior. So the word I come back to often is intimate. When the great blue sky and the leaf on the grass and the sound of the footstep are as intimate as the feeling of the breath, then there is no inside and outside. Then we know that the dichotomy of inside and outside is only an afterthought. The immediacy of experience declares itself with crystal clarity. A passing car and the sensation in the body, in the chest, in the gut, are exactly the same thing. They are intertwined, interpenetrated. This feels like a deep and profound and very still intimacy. It has no specific meaning. It has no purpose. It's not for me. It's not for anyone. We don't experience this and then try to imagine its benefit. Because if we imagine benefit, we're already in our mind. We're already beyond the illusory dichotomy of inside and outside, of self and other, of what's important and what's not important. So this comes primary to all of that. This is primary to all of that. Those illusions of what I need, what I don't need, how to defend my own boundaries, where I am, where I'm going, where I came from. These are all afterthoughts. These don't point to anything in reality. They only point to other thoughts or other concepts. So what is here right now for you? What is here for you when you don't think in terms of me and you, right or wrong, true or false, inside or outside? Touch into the senses and start there. Feel the feet touching the floor. Feel the sensation in your knees. Feel the sensation in your hands. Feel the sensation in your face. Just that. Listen to the sound inside and outside. It has no location, it's just sound. Just sensation, just sound. It informs itself. It's not occurring for you or for anyone. It's not even occurring in the sense of it being an event that comes and goes. It just is. Isness. Absolute simplicity. Simplicity and immediate sensation is your tuning fork. Take a breath. There is only breath. Take a step, there is only step. Listen to the bird call. There is only that bird call. Feel the emotion of sadness. There is only sadness. It's not inside and it's not outside. And it's not about any narrative. It's not about you. It's not about what you lost. It's not about the family members. It's not about the friends. It's not about the lovers. It's not about the injured ones. It's just itself, just sadness. Can you feel that purely? And then let go that completely. Pure experiencing is pure letting go. They're not two. They're one and the same. Pure movement without anything apart from it 
is absolute stillness. They're one and the same. How can stillness and movement be the same? To the mind, they cannot. To the mind, they're different things, different concepts. But that's okay. We can completely accept the mind doing the job it does. It's a symbol-making machine. The symbols are fine. But find out what those symbols seem to be pointing to, and you might be surprised. That one breath, is it anything more than that? Does it go beyond itself? Does it mean anything when we don't think, when we don't grasp, when we don't push away? Just breath. Is it even my breath, your breath, the breath of the world, the breath of the cosmos? It's just one breath. This is the same with Mu. What is Mu? The moment you make enough distance to start to contemplate what it is, then the mind identity has been stirred up. But that doesn't change what Mu is. It doesn't change the fact that there's never been separation. So use that as a tuning fork. Just Mu. Or just I, but not the thought I, the experience before it becomes anything, before you become conjugated into a belief, an emotion, an experience, a narrative, a story, right to that source. You don't find the source, you are the source. You don't find being, you are being. There is only being. Stop there. Don't add spiritual concepts. Don't try to deconstruct anything. Don't try to dig. Don't try to clarify. Now see that inside and outside are only thoughts. Close, far, thoughts. You need to know what close is to understand what far is and vice versa. You need to believe there's an inside to believe there's an outside and vice versa. So what is it to live this way? Well, everything takes care of itself. You don't have to worry about dividing time, managing inward and outward or your emotions and thoughts and feelings and your internal perceptions and balance them against your external duties and responsibilities and relationships. There's no dichotomy. There's no division. You sort out the inside when you sort out the outside, and you sort out the outside when you sort out the inside. And when you let go of the identity barriers that make it appear as if those are separate, then there's nothing to do. There's nothing to sort. It's just obvious. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. There's nothing to uphold. There's nothing to defend. There's nowhere to arrive because you arrive everywhere when you arrive right here and right now. There's never been anything but now, so there's no now. There's never been anything but here, so there's no here. Very simple. Don't complicate it with thought. If you have to seek, if you have to practice or inquire, Inquire right back into what is this? What is the most basic sense of I or being? What is consciousness before it's conscious of anything, including a thought or an image? Or what is Moo?